Aloha mai kako. Um, my name is Nainoa and um, I'm thankful that you're joining us here at this really special beach to my family in the south side of the island of Oahu called Mauna Lua. And um, at this time of day and this time of year, the just have a story. It, it's a, kind of an old story, but it was trying to figure out how in the world did our ancient voyagers find the Hawaiian Islands, the single most so-called isolated high island archipelago on the planet in the middle of the Pacific. <clears throat> and then we had, back then, we had literature that talked about this thing called zenith stars, stars that would go at this latitude directly overhead. So all you had to do is sail north from Tahiti to come to home to Hawaii and wait for those stars to be directly overhead. The problem with that was when you're on a moving canoe, it pitches and it rolls and it's rough, where is overhead? So we didn't have computers, we didn't have uh, stellariums. So we were actually had to go and um, do stuff like get a six foot piece of plywood, drill a hole in one of it, hang a uh, fishing line down and put a fishing net on the bottom, just enough to be above my father's cement lanai and go lie on the cement lanai all night and when the star came overhead, you move the lead and you could watch it going through the hole in the plywood. And so it, it, was, a, it was an amazing time, um, not like today, but that whole literature and belief that um, Zenith stars, overhead stars, was the answer was wrong. Because when you lie on my father's cement where it's stable, that's one thing. But on Hokulea, where it rocks, it pitches and rolls, you can't tell where overhead is. So we were running into the deadline to get ready to come home from Tahiti on the first voyage of Hokulea in 1980 that would do it without instruments, and we didn't have the answers. And uh, this is kind of like, for me, it's like um, kind of like a miracle that uh, <clears throat> we were studying in the, in the Bishop Museum Planetarium. That was the only technology we had. We had the most amazing teacher, his name was Will Koselka, that would go with us. We would sometimes bribe the security guards to, with plate lunches to let us take our sleeping bags and stay and sleep in the, the planetarium. And we would turn the sky over and over and over again for hours and hours. And we were studying the wrong place in the heavens. We are studying overhead. And that wasn't the answer, but we didn't know it. We didn't know where to look. But the answer kept crossing up, crossing the artificial horizon in the planetarium over and over again. It was there, but we couldn't see it because we're looking at the wrong place. And this is just a personal story. I live right down the road in a one-bedroom rented apartment, and, um, and we're getting really kind of worried and scared that we're, we're not going to be able to figure it out. We're not, we're not going to know how to come home. And a friend of mine who was training for the Kansas City Chiefs football team was living with me and I was helping him as much as I could and so we had one bedroom and then he slept on the floor and then it's a true story I was asleep and um, and um, and it was like that moment when you're fully asleep in the dream to sitting up wide awake in a second and going that's it and um, I jumped up I forgot that I was in my bibbidees. I grabbed the ruler. I grabbed a uh, red uh, uh, fingernail polish that I don't paint my fingernails red, but I use it to make our fishing lures and um, and uh, a ruler. And uh, and I jumped over my friend Mike Siasi, ran out the door. He's going, "What are you doing?" So he's chasing me down the road. It's on Bay Street in Kulia Oaks. At the end of Bay Street is the park. And it's a view to the southern horizon. And, and it just was, we ran up to a, 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 one of those poles that said, uh, deep water, strong current, danger. And we took out the, um, we took out the, uh, the, the red uh, fingernail polish. And we made three tiny lines on the pole. One was the, the ocean horizon. One was the bottom star of the Southern Cross. And one was the top star of the Southern Cross. Right at the moment that, it was upright. It only happens once at night. And we took the ruler and we measured it. That stellar distance of the top star to the bottom star 
that never changes is a certain distance. But in that part, uh, and forever in that part, the bottom star to the, to the horizon was equally the same. So we, and that's where we recognize that the, in Tahiti, the Southern Cross is about 45 degrees above the horizon. Each time you keep sailing north, it keeps getting lower and lower and lower until top star and bottom star is equal to bottom star to the ocean, your home. And, um, and uh, we measured it, it was exact. And, uh, and, then, um, and then we were so excited. And then someone showed me a book, um, a, a really special book probably the best book on star names in the Pacific. I, I, I think hands down the best. It was written by an extraordinary, extraordinary lady. She was a professor at the University of Hawaii. Her name was Rubalite Kavena Johnson. She was a scholar. She was an author. She was a researcher. She knew more about the stars than anywhere else. But in that book, the Southern Cross has, a, has many names, but, but one name was Hanai Akamalama, to be cared for by the moon. So for us to find Hawaii, we need to be able to see the stars and we need to be able to see the horizon at that moment that the Southern Cross is directly upright. And so the Hanai Akamalama, to be cared for the moon, what does that mean? Because when the moon is not up, it's windy and it's dark. You can't see the horizon, so you can't measure the altitude. But conversely too, when the full moon is up, then some, it makes the horizon very illuminated and visible, but it washes out starlight. So it's harder to see the stars. Tonight is the night that we celebrate the best day of the year when the Southern Cross is not in the full moon or the new moon. It's in the first quarter. It's in between the two. And tonight is the night where... You can see the horizon, you can see the brilliance of the stars, you can measure it most accurately. And not only that, this happens every month when the Southern Cross is, is visible in the nighttime, but the month of May is the miracle May. It, it's, it's, the, it's the miracle month. It's where, it's where you can cross safely from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere because you're gonna be leaving Tahiti when the, when the hurricane season is finished and you're going be, be coming to Hawaii before it starts. It's that magic moment, that, 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 that window in, into safety. And the other is the, you're picking the right phase of the moon. So we try to time our guests leaving Tahiti to get to the latitude of Hawaii when we're in the first, the first quarter moon to be able to, to give us the best picture of the, um, the Southern Cross in the right position. So tonight, in about, yeah, a little over an hour from now, that arc of, of marching stars, there's a whole series of them that has Hanayaka Malamba, that has Kamaili Mua, Kamaili Hope, the two bright stars of Alpha and Beta Centauri that are used to find home. That's all going to happen tonight. And so if you get a chance, um, grab your mom and dad and uh, anybody jump in the car, go to the beach on the south side and watch that parade of, of the navigation stars that we learned how to find home. And all the navigators use the same stars. Have a gr great evening. Stay safe and, and, and thank you for, for listening.